New York investors, how would you like to get into multifamily real estate ownership and only have to spend about 30 grand, right? $30,000 and you, Mr. or Mrs. New York City, can be a multifamily landlord and I'm going to help you do it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, the brainchild of me. James Wise, obviously. Anywho, if you're interested in investing in real estate, I hope you subscribe and stick around after this show because I work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them accomplish their real estate goals, right? Uh, today's show is for an investor from New York City named Kim. Kim, welcome. This is the first time you and I have worked together, the first video. By the way, just so everyone is aware, these videos, I'm going to be going over a triplex for you, Kim. A triplex I think you're going to like quite a bit. Three tenants, and you're only going to need about 30 grand. The numbers are going to be great. I'm going to explain a lot of things. But it's important for everyone to understand. This property, 518 Lake, okay, when this show appears live on Holton Wise TV, folks, the deal's no longer available. I sent this to Kim privately. If you want to work with me in the same way Kim is doing, same way you're about to watch, uh, you can click the show notes below. And book yourself a free call at my team to discuss it. Or you could simply send us an email. Give us your phone number. Uh, we'll hop on the phone talk to you. Also, uh, we have lenders available too. So if you want our lender list, that's how you get it as well. All right. So got all that stuff out of the way. On to you, Kim, specifically, right? This triplex, I think you're going to really dig it because you've reached out to me. You're interested in multifamily properties. But before I get into the numbers, I want to talk to you about one thing you specifically mentioned to me in your last email. You would like to get um, <clears throat> multifamily properties, but you want the tenants to pay all of the utilities, right? Gas, electric, uh, water, sewer, okay? You want separate meters. Now, Here's the thing, folks, and if you haven't caught on to this yet, if you're living out there in New York, you can't buy triplexes with $30,000 in New York City. That's not possible, right? The real estate in New York City is insanely expensive, but that's why people like him come to Holton Wise TV, come to me, because I work in the most cost-effective markets in the United States. I bring properties to investors in New York uh, from cheaper cash flow markets. Today's property is going to be in Ohio, right? Ohio, number one, very, very cheap. Number two, guess what? It's a red state, right? Bill de Blasio isn't running around Ohio fucking stuff up for us, okay? We actually get to uh, operate our properties uh, as owners with rights, right? Bill de Blasio isn't selling our rights to buy votes, okay? So with that said, Kim, there's going to be some things that are a little bit different how things are ran in Ohio than what you may be used to, and one of which is how uh, the water's done. Multifamily properties. If you're interested in multifamily properties, which is what you said you want to do, uh, you're always going to have to pay the water sewer bill, right? We build that cost into the rents, right? And I'm going to go over the numbers on this triplex, and I'm going to show you your estimated water sewer cost, right? You cannot... Uh, pass that bill on to your multifamily tenants or any tenants in general. Multifamily is not going to have separate meters. Uh, in conjunction with even on single-family rentals in this market, you're going to be unable to pass that cost off directly to your tenants. The reason why is very complex, very complicated. It has to do with Ohio's landlord-tenant laws as well as the Cleveland Division of Water, which uh, sends water to pretty much everybody. So... The detailed complex answer is actually available for you at any time, Kim. It's on the fact on HoltonWise.com. I have built out a huge uh, thing that will explain everything to you. I understand this is probably bad news, but unfortunately, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. With that said, Kim, I still think you're going to be blown away by this deal. Uh, this is a deal that uh, I had worked with another one of my clients for, and... Um, 
we put it under contract at 115000 right? Only about thirty k is coming out of your pocket. The rest is going to be financed by a lender. Uh, and after we received the inspection report, uh, he chose to go another route. So what I'm going to do now is provide you with that footage, that analysis, and then when I email this video to you, I'm going to give you that inspection report. I absolutely still believe this deal is a go. Is it a perfect property? No, but for the price... It's it's doing pretty good, uh, and best part is I don't even know if we'll have to pay 115. Uh, being as we already got the inspection report, the sellers would probably be very happy just to move towards closing, not have to deal with additional inspections. So uh, I would like to maybe come back at them like, yo, we read the inspection report, 110, let's do the deal. So that's my thoughts. I'm going to leave you now, Kim, with my original analysis, and you let me know what you want to do. Welcome back, folks. This, this is what you're paying for. Let me stretch. Let me get a little, uh, a little, little stretch in there, you know, because this, this is where we roll up our sleeves and we see how the sausage is made, right? Any jerk off on the internet can uh, say, hey, buy properties out here in the Cleveland market because they're cheaper, right? Anybody could do that, but... Just because it's cheap doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money, right? It is my goal to try to mitigate your risks of money loss as much as possible. So I want to give you all the information I possibly can so you can make an appropriate, informed investment decision, right? I understand uh, the Cleveland market is new to you. That's why I'm here, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate run the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind, right? We're the one-stop shop for investors, okay? One-stop shop. Starts here, due diligence process, identifying properties that I think will make sense, right? Then after the sale, my team, we handle the property management. We do insurance, right? We do insurance everywhere in Ohio, right? So if you are watching this show right now and you have a rental property anywhere in Ohio, I can almost guarantee you I could save you money on your premium, right? Uh, reach out to us. We'll give you a uh, no obligation quote because all we do is landlord policies, right? So, like, don't ask us for a quote on your boat or your car. We ain't in that game, right? Just rental properties. Now, insurance, check. Property management, check. Maintenance, check. Renovations, check. Landscaping, check. But back to where it all begins, right? Due diligence. Understanding what you're getting, okay? Unbiased assessments. This is not my house. I don't own this house. The seller hasn't hired me to sell this house to you. You have hired me to break it down, see if it will fit your investment goals. So that's what we're going to do. 518 Lake Ave, Elyria, 44035. Been on the market for 20 Three days. The price, $122,500. I like this property quite a bit, but I don't like the price. We only have two photos. That is unfortunate, but it is par for the course when you're investing in real estate, folks. Tenant-occupied uh, properties, notoriously difficult to get inside to get photos. But I will say I do believe the listing agent and the seller were a little lazy on this one because it's occupied by two tenants, but it is actually a triplex. There is a third teeny tiny unit above the garage. It's like 300 square feet, something like that, a little one-one. Uh, it's vacant, so I don't know why they didn't give us pictures. So I don't know what's going on with that. We'll have to figure that out. Um, as we go further down the due diligence process, I'm assuming it's going to need a little bit of repair. Uh, probably nothing major. I'm sure you're doing just like a quick turn, right? But it's kind of irrelevant because it's almost priced in like free. You're really not paying for that unit, right? Now, 122.5 is what they're asking. I don't think we need to pay 122.5. I think the appropriate price here is going to be 115k. Now, if we're getting like just a standard duplex out here, 
Like, dude, we're probably looking at like 100K for this because uh, each, e each of the units in the duplex has three beds, one bath, right? And those are going to generate huge rents, 850 a month, okay? And then it's almost like we're getting that third unit for free, right? Like 15K is basically all I'm really adding on to that is what I think we need to pay for it, right? And that one, after we fresh it up, we'll get about 550, right? So market rents on this sucker, 2,250 or 27K for the year, right? But this is what... Uh, different rates, Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, James Wise, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you want to call me in this service, what we do here. This is where it differentiates us from like other turnkey providers, right? I'm not going to just tell you, oh, you're going to make 27 k a year. That's bang and let's do the deal. No, there's costs associated, right? So if you break that down, right, this is the chart. Show you your fixed and variable expense performance estimates, folks, of the 27 k you're really only going to be making a profit of about 13820 right? And then if we get it at my desired price point, 115 k you put down 32 bank kicks in 86 right? That projects out to a 29.4% cash on cash return. Sounds sweet. We're not done, though, right? Let's get back to some other real-world things we need to discuss, right? That 29.4% return would be... If we can get the existing two tenants up to market rent, if we could get a third tenant in that garage unit, garage apartment unit without any renovation. I don't think that uh, either of those are impossible, but I don't think either of those scenarios are likely. Here's what we have, but this is actually pretty freaking sweet. Uh, the two tenants in the duplex are actually super long-term tenants. One tenant has been there for 22 years and the other for 10. Their rents are five ninety-five and five and a quarter. I'll tell you this, I'd rather have a tenant in the property for 22 years at 595 uh, then get market rent and change my tenants every couple of years. You will make more money with the 22-year tenant because where you really lose your booty in this business is turning units over all the time. So what we don't want to do is immediately go to 850 because we don't want to lose those super consistent tenants. Folks, 22-year tenants are not common. Do not anticipate buying a property like this in the Cleveland market in what I would call a blue-collar area, like a C-grade area, CB area. Do not anticipate buying something similar to this and getting a 22 and a 10-year tenant. That is an amazing run. You want to do whatever you can to keep those tenants. So what I like to do in situations like this is keep their rent the same for the first year and then slowly bump it up, right? The goal should be to eventually get them at or around market rent without a turnover. Because, dude, they've been there 22 years, bro. Like, 22 years? Like, if you think you're just going to sweep up when they leave and the next tenant's going to come and pay $850, you are out of your mind. Right? You got to do a full turn, right? Walls, carpet, uh, new fixtures, the kitchen, the bath, the whole shebang, right? You're looking at at least 10 k right? So you want to try to keep them in there, right? So it's going to take us a while to get up to those market rents. And then, of course, at the inspection, we'll have to figure out what's uh, the situation with that little garage unit. But again, it's almost a freebie, really. I'm only putting a $15,000 value on it because if we were getting a duplex here, 3131, we'd probably have to pay 100 for it anyway, right? So uh, if the garage unit was all jacked up, I mean, you could honestly just not do anything with it and just rock this as a duplex, right? It makes cash uh, with just the two tenants, right? So all in all, Super solid deal, right? I like where it's at. Uh, the next step, of course, is to put in an offer and then uh, go through the home inspection process, right? Some things you should know. We are not going to be anticipating brand new roof, furnace, or hot water tanks, right? I know people do the turnkey investing and they think they're going to get properties with those new stuff. Now, that's not how it works in the real world, right? Like maybe a turnkey provider that just buys foreclosures, renovates everything, and sells it to you, but they're selling it to you at a premium. If you're trying to buy stuff at or below market value, fair market value stuff, arm's length transaction properties, we're trying to beat this seller up, get a, a nice little discount. What is that, 7500 off of what they're asking for? In the real world, landlords don't do that kind of stuff, right? Think about it. A roof, it's like a $7,000 roof. They last about 30 years. Let's say this roof's 22 years old. Why in the hell would the landlord... Uh, pay seven grand to replace the roof when he's probably going to get eight years out of it, right? Uh, furnaces cost three Gs, last about 30 years. Hot water tanks cost about a G, last about 15 years, right? So you're going to get properties like this uh, with these mechanicals uh, in varying age cycles, usually towards the end of their life cycle is what's common, right? That's why on your chart, let's pull that chart back up. As you can see, the capital expenditures I have you saving 1350 a year, right? You're not actually spending that, but I told you your net operating income estimates only 13,820. Let's say you don't have to do furnaces, roof or hot water tanks for the next 5 years, right? 
you would have 1350 for five years, right, in your pocket, right? It's not like you're actually spending that. But I don't let you guys believe that that is pure cash flow because I know eventually the $7,000 bill is coming, the $3,000 bill is coming, the $1,000 bill is coming, okay? Another thing why we're into the chart, repairs and maintenance, 1350 right? You know where you spend almost all of your repairs and maintenance money? Turnovers, right? This property happens to have a 22-year tenant and a 10-year tenant, right? So fucking think about that, right? If you had 1350 a year times 22 years, that's an extra 30 grand, $29,700 of repairs and maintenance you're likely not spending, right? That we're budgeting for, right? Think about that. That's why your 22-year tenants, even though they're paying a little under market rent, that's why you should focus on them versus like hitting your specific uh, metrics, right? Real estate, yes, it's a number of business, but it's also a people business and you got to play the hand you're dealt, right? And uh, make moves based on that, right? But all told, I think this is a super awesome investment and I'm super high on Elyria right now. Uh, it's west of Cleveland and I think we get a lot better deals in Elyria because the national folks are like just hammering Cleveland, 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 right? You see all these articles like what's the best turnkey rental market? And they say Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. But people out of state, they don't ever realize that there's like all these other uh, uh, cities and suburbs around Cleveland. Greater Cleveland area has like two or three million people in it. Only like 350 or 60,000 of them live in the city of Cleveland, right? So there's a lot of fucking housing outside of the Cleveland city walls that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. And I also believe the government in Elyria is easier to deal with, more landlord friendly than the government in Cleveland, right? Like in whole, at whole wise, we deal with like, I don't know, 30 different municipalities, right? Elyria is one of the most landlord friendly of them in the entire Cleveland market. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.